to pay back my scholarship grant at UP, UNDP Public Works, and UP. While working in the Metro Plan Manila, 40 towns and cities, and we had experts aboard working at 89 of them. I was team leader and senior planner. The rulers of Dubai saw the plan. So December 1976, Sultan Khalifa came to look for me with Meta the Mandarin, offered me the job, and I said, I still have 120 days, so April I reported. April 1977. The Manila International Airport was probably 50 years ahead of Dubai Airport. Today it's probably 200, the Naia, probably 200 years behind Dubai <laughs> I was representing urban planning and architecture. Approved the permits in one day. Any of the signatories were any objection, you have a fortnight, two weeks to justify your objection. If you cannot justify it, it's automatically approved. But because what is good for business, it's good for Dubai. And and he said, I'm paying you only six hours a day. We're generously paid, but our job was only up to 1.30 in the afternoon. And it was in Dubai, the, the Henry Cities, the Ayalas, and Taipans and Taipans from Manila met me. And they enticed me to come home and they saw the Henry City. That's why. Maybe it's not for the two gentlemen, we never came back. And we were only 200,000 population in Dubai. The rule of Dubai said, make, design for um, two million people. The utilities, everything. Underground utilities. Design Dubai as if there's no oil. At that time Dubai was 98% oil in Uganda. Today, only 2%. Emirates Airlines earn more than oil. They give them the tourism, dining, and so on. So he, I remember five instructions. One was design Dubai as if there's no oil. Because in 35 years, there's no more oil. Uh, make a garden city out of the desert. We're importing garden soil from Pakistan, irrigation from Germany, flowers from Poland. And then make Dubai a best center city in the Middle East and North Africa, number one city. Then who are the competing cities? Kuwait, Tehran, maybe maybe Jeddah or Riyadh. Let's overtake them. Bring Dubai from the third or fourth world into the first world in 15 years. They were able to achieve them. My colleagues, they went to the usual cities, London, Paris, New York. But I said, those cities are not instant cities. It took them hundreds of years to be in the first world. So I went to cities that became first world in less than 15 years. Um, San Francisco. Go West, young man. The franchise started with coal, construction boom come, trading post, uh, shopping center, commercial center, education center, um, aerospace center, now information technology center. They did not stop at one resource. I brought that back conversation to Dubai. Dubai beyond oil. I went to Hong Kong and I talked to the old people and you know what? How Hong Kong started? I'm not recommending here. Opium and drugs. <laughs> so from opium and drugs became a trading post, manufacturing center, the political refugees of uh, mainland China, President Shanghai, they brought with them their garment making skills and manufacturing skills. So opium and trading to garments, manufacturing, and tourism center, regional center, and so on. Then I went to Singapore. Singapore was kicked out of the Federation of Malaysia. They were so lucky there was a Lee Kuan Yew, an honor graduate from Cambridge. And he was number one in his class, uh, better than the Prime Minister of the UK <laughs> at that time. So I think Lee Kuan Yew just copied Hong Kong with more landscaping so that if you plant and grow a tree, it was tax deductible for five years. After five years, that it can take care of itself. And what do we do here? After the photo, never mind the tree. So, Europe, Zurich, and Geneva. How did it get started? 
refugees from world wars. The, the Germans, they went to Zurich. The French, they went to Geneva. And the rest of Switzerland, the Italians. How did they get started? Chocolate making and watch making. The work in possible is not possible in Dubai. Everything is possible. The past six years, 44 signatories to get a permit. Then, horizontal land and vertical. It's an obstacle course for corruption. I reported so many corruption the past six years, I got millions of pesos in libel cases for allegedly maligning the good name of the corrupt. <laughs> We're number one in the world in my marine bio biodiversity. We're number one in Bosco centers. We're number one in in sailors and seafarers, I like to believe we are number one in musicians. I've been to 2,000 cities in 67 countries, always meet a uh, uh, Filipino musician. And I think we're also number one in nurses in the world. And uh, we're number two in BPOs. Um, we have we're also number two in geothermal energy. And yet, cost of energy is so expensive. Even in the Bicol region, where they have a geothermal energy, so the president said we was there. Go federal. So the future one, you just use it in Bitcoin. You don't have to provide it to the sun. And we have the third longest coastline in the world. When we're in Dubai, only 70 kilometers of Dubai is the waterfront. They were sold as front door of development, high value real estate. So Sheikh Mohammed decided, let's do the Palm Islands, artificial islands, to add 2,000 kilometers more of waterfront. And there's the Crown Islands as a, a prime minister also, but it's a wave breaker for tsunamis and, and storm surges. And Kuwait, why did Iraq invite that Kuwait? Maybe because Kuwait is blocking the waterfront of Iraq. And, and the Philippines, we have the third longest coastline, longer than mainland USA. But the challenge is we have very long coastline. Philippine Coast Guard, all coast, no guards. <laughs> then we have Philippine Air Force, all air, no force. <laughs> and if you rotate the map of the world, we're right in the middle. So all superpowers will always be interested in our islands, including the drug lords. They already did their all feasibility study that we are the best location for trading. And then we are, we are, Number four in gold, Dubai exports more gold than us. They don't have gold. They don't have orchids. I think number two also the export of orchids. Um, number four is building, um, terms of the Japanese and, and Koreans. Number one is sailors, number four is shipbuilding. But Peter Wallace would not even ride uh, our Philippine ship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're number five in all other mineral resources, and number four in human resources. And the Filipinos, the Filipino expats, they used to call us Filipino expats. But we brought down the branding of the mid-80s OFW, and they feel so bad. It sounds like prisoner of war. <laughs> and then the airport, like Nagbala, they are extorted 50 to $100, even if their papers are in copy. We are 400 times the size of Singapore. 400 times. And our, I think our GDP is the same as Singapore. 400 times. 5 million Singaporeans, more than 100 million Filipinos. 350 times the size of Hong Kong. 8 times the size of Taiwan. 8 times the size of South Korea. My friend in South Korea was telling me, the first two buildings of South Korea after the Korean War, built by Filipinos, the U.S. Embassy, and the sports arena. And from the 1930s to the mid-70s, we were number two in Asia. That's why all Asian countries, they thought Metro Manila was the highest development potential as a financial center. And the Japanese wanted it in Tokyo because they are the largest contributor. The Shao Iran wanted it in Iran, they had deep pockets. Japan agreed only provided the president of ADB always be Japanese. And uh, Philippines 2021 and beyond. Why 2021? United Arab Emirates, successful federal states, 
will be 50 years old in 2021. The Philippines will be 500 years old in 2021. Maybe because we are not federal. And, and uh, the development vision is we need really genuine reforms is the leaders of present doing and genuine change. And I think our president is really the most patriotic who really loves the country, willing to die for the country. Being the Philippines well in the two thousand first to really a globally competitive country. Most of our laws are stupid, no, not stupid, obsolete. Obsolete laws that less make us less globally competitive. Uh, because in our country, lawyers are higher than planners. That's when the world we, we get more respect. Planners are tech engineers. And uh, the opportunity to bring down walls and build more bridges, we're still doing walls, 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 walls. After the fall of the Berlin Wall, the economy of Berlin and, and Germany went up. And why do we have walls? It was introduced by the, our Spanish colonizers, intramuros for the Australians in the Principalia. If you were rich and powerful, intramuros inside the walls. If you were a peasant, a native, or some line, Chinese merchant, extramuros outside the walls. Look at Makati today is still the same. Central business is from Makati. The day temples uh, populations 11 times the night, nighttime population. Because planning is balanced. Jobs and housing in Makati is in balance. The, the average employee in Makati wastes six hours a day in traffic because they are priced out of the housing stock. And Makati is surrounded by gated communities. And urban and regional connectivity, convergence, context, and corridors and networks, and unity and diversity. First time so many local governments are hiring us. We're doing Pampanga, and I told the former president and the governor. Pampanga is three, three times the size of Singapore, two times the size of Hong Kong. You choose. We make three Singapore's or two Hong Kong. So Pampanga, megalopolis. A metropolis, several cities. Megalopolis is several metropolitan areas. And Pampanga can be the counter market to Metro Manila. I've been putting forward, even when I was a student, relocate Malacanian. So I was a student activist. It's a dead end. Malacanian. Folks is saying they need them. It also, but for security. So it's easy to do a court then. And um, you can put the Mendiola Bridge across the river. It's a dead end. And I think the president is willing to listen. Relocate Malacanian, all the uh, national government offices to Malacanian, maybe even the Supreme Court, and all the foreign embassies in Subi. The USA may. What's right now is uh, anti-corruption, where we have been before. In Dubai, we were taught about uh, three kinds of infrastructure. This is a one billion investment from the Emir of Kuwait for Clark. 72,000 jobs, one billion US dollars. They added his name, he added two billion dollars more. That's probably the most expensive naming rights I've ever come across. <laughs> so a progressive infrastructure. These are international airports, international seaports, International schools, international hospitals, and what have you. Hard infrastructure, we all know that. The roads, the utilities. Soft infrastructure, it's more important. The ease of doing business. No corruption, no red tape. I added the being sustainable as part of it and institutional. You may have the best plans in the world, but you don't have the institutions to implement them. The nothing happens. And, uh, this one they taught at the uh, Graduate School of Design in, in Harvard. You may be the best architect in the world, but if you don't know all of this, or engineer, nothing. And if even in society that, that is corrupt, doesn't affect address poverty, inequality, incompetent, etc., be an architectural activist. I was an activist during my student, I'm still an activist as an architecture. Only 1% of our population are corrupt, but the 98 or 99% are cowards or don't care anymore. If only 10% of us Filipinos fight corruption, we will be in the top 19 economies of the world. I spent four years of my life in the seminary, so I started Latin. Corruption comes from two Latin words. Core, the heart, rapture, to break the heart. 
So we are heartbroken in society. Also, corrupt to breaking down together. So we're breaking down together as a nation. We're breaking together because of corruption. And if you fight corruption, if you believe in your faith, it's a corporal works of mercy. Because the worst sufferers of corruption that are the 26 million homeless, hungry, very poor Filipinos. And the, the president's initiative is pro-poor. Because the ones who voted him are the generous crowd, not the perfume set. The 84% Filipinos. Transportation. So these are the rankings. Uh, I think just the other experts might talk about it. South Korea, places for people. It used to be like this. Above the canal was an uh, elevated skyway and a road. The former mayor of Seoul, I think she's the president now, she removed the skyway, removed the road, put back the water. This is one of the most popular um, destinations in Seoul, Korea right now. Uh, both, there are about 20 kinds of urban transport. Number one is pedestrian, bicycle, public, and private. We cannot control the sale of cars, but we can control the use of the cars during peak hours. 1976, we recommended congestion charging using peak hours. Every enter Manila, to Manila, you pay more. In Dubai, they implemented it. Every time you enter Dubai from Sharjah and Abu Dhabi, it's about uh, 60 pesos every time. Every time you cross the bridges or tunnel across the Dubai Creek, 60 pesos. The, the LRT, is, uh, we propose also the first call train, business class, first class, more expensive. Second train, women and children. The third for everybody else. And during peak hours, parking is so expensive. Off peak hours, parking is free. Like two to four days, you take your sets out, it's free. I've been sharing that to the government. Dubai learned from Metro Bell Manila. Now we have to go up to Uruguay to unlearn our mistakes to learn from them. I'm glad the president is visiting end of the end of the month. So these are the different kinds of transportation and the last choice is the automobile. You go to Tokyo, Tokyo is one of the highest car owners in the world, but you don't see much cars until 1 o'clock in the morning. You want to see beautiful cars in Tokyo, get out at 1 in the morning, because the trains are not running at 1 o'clock. And we've given this to government. Those with less in wheels should have more in roads. One third for people, one third for trees and landscaping, and only one third for vehicles. You look at EDSA, how not to do it. <laughs> and very nice, we, the, emerge, the central business district along ELSA. ELSA was planned by the Americans in 1945. Six cross roads were met from Nina. There are supposed to be transportation corridors. Elsewhere in the world, when you have super regional malls, malls the big ones, they should be outside the city or 9 kilometers apart. Here, My colleagues at Harvard and MIT, they want me to write about Metro Manila, Urban Laboratory, how not to do it. And maybe a book to be done from grid to grid lab. Because many open spaces have become tall buildings, etc. So the Americans proposed six circumference and road. Until now, we don't have number six yet. I have been proposing up to ten circumference and road, three to five international areas. And government, the past six years, are analyzing whether Clark or Manila. And, and connect Bataan to Cavite. So people from Calabarzon going to Clark or Subi, they don't have to mess around with our traffic. And with the great urban road centers as counter magnets to Metro Manila. So water resources. So water, seven years water crisis in Metro Manila. In 30 years, the whole Philippines, if we do nothing. During the dry season, we have no water. Rainy season, we have too much water. It's just a simple water man resources management. Next slide. Singapore. They're piping water from Malaysia. So it's not too secure to do that. So zero waste in Singapore. The water you flush from the toilet, you will drink it afterwards. <laughs> there is hydrants. We now have a master plan for flood control and drainage in Metro Manila, announced by Babe Simpson. Bad news. 
it will be done in 2035. What do we do every day? So adaptive architecture. For San Juan, we started the uh, hazard mapping overlay over uh, the zoning land use map. So those areas vulnerable to flooding, different building code. This one, rainwater harvesting, recycle the water, then all over the world. Social infrastructure, um, Hong Kong Science Park. If we use the residential density of Hong Kong, all the world's 7 billion population, we can all fit in the state of Texas. And Hong Kong is 71% open space. Plan for long-term growth in the new world. Design on human scale for use of urban report uh, ser uh, services, providing transportation alternatives, more efficient use of land resources, conserving the landscapes. Good design really matters. Providing choices, protecting environmental resources. Affordable housing project can be multifamily. This got sold out for all. Adaptive architecture again. Our clients, too cheap wanted to have Smoky Mountain. They were willing to donate 3 billion pesos for 6,000 houses for the poor. And, but the master said, that's your garbage, clean it first. No political will to clean it. And two cheap Buddhists from 96 countries, they appointed us, they appointed me to a principal architect in our firm's power of architecture, power of associates, to design a, a hospital a university and three schools in Kathmandu. And the master said, we want you to design them to last 1,000 years, 40 generations. But I told the master, my liability is only 25 years. And she says, we trust you. We went around the world to look for architects and engineers. Many have the skills, but they don't have the heart. Some volunteers even gratis pro bono. They have the heart, but they do not have the skills. And we believe you have both of them. The foreigners affirm me the global standing of the Philippines. And postcards on the future. When we're not too busy, we go around the city taking pictures of the amplification of our cities and send those ugly pictures to the mayors and an architectural perspective on how they should look like. Some one mayor hired us after that. Some mayors were not too happy about it. So, so let's say in Butuan, their waterfront, it can be like this, postcard. In all cost tourism master plan, uh, remove the walls, put more, uh, make them Australians, and make shops for students. Uh, Estero in Manila today, postcard from the future. I showed this to Mayor Herod. Yeah. Uh, so Estero in San Miguel, near Malacanian, postcard from the future. Um, uh, Estero de Bago, Manila today, the future. So we can have green art for the port in North Harbor today, the future. Uh, another creek in San Juan today, the future. Postcard from the future. And San Juan River today, postcard from the future. And in San Juan, the federal art we there. And with the pedestrian connectivity, with more landscaping. And Annapolis Street today, so messy, can be like this, with a monorail, interconnected with MRT Elsa and Aurora. And in San Juan, we planned it, I was invited by Berlin, New York, and Shanghai to present our smart city platform for San Juan as a model for the future. So I spoke to the mayor and the vice mayor team who were quality. We have to follow our plan because the rest of the world is watching you. And next. Molo Plaza Iloilo today, postcard from the future. Uh, waterfront Iloilo today, postcard from the future. Sambuang Beto Gay, postcard from the future. And still in Parapanga today, postcard from the future. Pasig River today. In your Burnham Plan Manila in 1905, we wanted Pasig River like 3% and the stairs of Manila, the canals of Venice, and Ma Manila Bayfront, the Bay of Naples. When the Americans were here, we were following the city efficient and city beautiful principles of the new world now. And postcards from the future. Makati on the left, Mandaluyong on the right, with more pedestrian and bicycle bridges, ferry boats linking the cities and communities 
um, along Manila Bay and along Laguna Bay. So one month transport, water transport. It's feasible. It's there. It's available. Next slide. And I think all of us would like to live in master plan, environment friendly cities and communities, better connected, more accessible, more walkable, likable, safer, better lighted, more convenient, cleaner, in mixed income, cross generational, mixed developments that integrate places to live, workshop and dine, learn and worship in healthcare, recreation and leisure, with some 24 hour cycle activity centers. This is Rockwell here. When we first planned it, 8,000 per square meter land value. After the plan and architectural concepts came out, 120,000 per square meter before the permit. It's the highest value appreciation in Metro Manila the past 25 years. This was the first real estate project of the local scheme. And these are our contacts. And next slide. So we don't have to really get the plan. So many best practices in the world. Every time I talk about best practices in the world, they call it best practices. Having it here, revolutionary idea. <laughs> <laughs> Other countries, like many of us are living in villages. The Manning Administration in Harvard and Harvard, many of the big single family home in the middle of the city. You have a larger carbon footprint. You are preventing more families to live closer to their place of work. You are you are arrogating to yourself prime urban land resources. You are encouraging more urban sprawl than growth in the forest and the farms. The Bloomberg, the Clintons, the Kennedys, the Trumps, in the Manhattan they live in apartments. Their big houses are in the suburbs. In our country, Different. Let's say Rockwell. At least the first five towers we designed. Rizal, Luna, or so, Isa, or so, or so, or so, 220 units per hectare. Four spark, only four dwelling units per hectare. It's no brainer again. You can take less more carbon from it. They have beautiful gardens that only the housemates are admiring. They put a high wall so nobody else can see. <laughs> and this observation came foreign ambassadors telling me. You are still a feudal society, the, 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 the maids dressed like you know, the Spanish times. <laughs> the ambassadors, when they go, they tell me about it. Of course, they also live there. So I wish we could also transfer all the embassies into Subi. Thank you very much. <laughs>